she knew something was up. She knew that she knew she had an issue with her memory. Uh, and that she had been writing things down probably for 10 or 15 years before that, like a lot of writing. And I think she was journaling a lot before that. So when she received the diagnosis that day, um, my mother was just, don't tell anybody. She was more worried that people would find out and very whereas private. very private. It, it was not going to be known to anybody. And then I was more, um, I just wanted to support her. Well, for a while she was a little bit angry and uh, she went through a while of that and then she kind of didn't really remember what she was angry, but re really made her angry or she just, or it was gone, like it, she would be angry for a little short period and it would never hang on. But uh, I, I know it's anger and frustration from, you know, not remembering, not realizing what's going on more because that wasn't really her nature to have a temper. Yeah, I think it was the progression. It was the natural progression of her. She had acceptance of it, but then the anger is just the frustration. And yeah. then she went through that, and and then she went into the settlement. And then she, she got very quiet and content, and then she just liked to watch. So she mm -hmm. went through a different, you know, different process through it. And by the time she was right. in the nursing home, she was sitting and watching. And it was actually really nice to have the interactions of all the different patients. So I think that those eight months were important to her. Um, she loved seeing, she really loved being around the grandkids. That was probably her favorite thing is watching them as mm -hmm. at all different ages. I have four grandchildren, they're different ages. So she loved seeing them and, and she just loved the interaction of everybody coming and going in the house. And so that was really important to her, just seeing people and being, she liked more interaction one-on-one -on -one and listening. And right. she would ask you the same five questions all the time that it's not about you, it's the disease, it's not really them. It, it changes their personality at times. Sometimes they can be like little kittens and sometimes they can <laughs> be like lions and tigers. <laughs> and uh, I so actually, true. it sounds really terrible, but I actually um, stopped calling my mom, mom, and I'd call her Eva because she would get more nicer to me when she thought I was another. <laughs> She thought I was just a friend, not her daughter. And so everybody used to say, why are you calling her Eva? Isn't this your mother? And I'd say, well, I'm just into it. And it's like, it works. And, you know, and then, you know, because she, she, they can be bossy because they don't know, right? You know, and, uh, but, uh, but then there's the sweetness of it too, that, you know, that there's, there's two sides to it. So, you know, enjoy the days where they're, they've got the innocent sweetness of a child. And then, then just, uh, just uh, the other days, just tell yourself it's, it's not them talking, it's the Alzheimer's talking. And it's not about you. And it's not their fault. And yeah, it's nothing to do with you. And get a support group and, and get breaks when you can. 